Caleb, the Defensive Player of the Year in the conference last year, the Player of the Year in the conference this season, and tasked indeed with guarding Kiana Williams. For more on Kiana, we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, they call Kiana Williams Special K, and as if she needed any more energy and excitement today, she has a lot. She's playing in her hometown of San Antonio, and there is a huge crowd here to see her play. She has been able to safely distance see her parents, Michelle, or Michael and Lachelle. She's got them cooking for the team. They brought them a ping pong table. She is getting this hometown experience, and she loves it. Tara Vanderveer told us she's happy and it's contagious. Our entire team feels that energy, and there is a huge crowd on hand here. A lot of number 23 shirts that say she's back. She is looking forward to playing in front of friends and family today. Well, Holly, from what we've heard, the barbecue cooked by the Williams family was, I, I believe Haley Jones said it was smoking. Smacking. Smacking? Smacking. You know, I'm not cool enough yet. I think they're it's both turned. pretty good, though. Either way, <laughs> it sounds delicious. So Stanford at 27 and 2, the number one overall seed in the tournament, taking on a Missouri State team that's 23 and 2 on the season. Stanford has won 16 straight games. Missouri State has won 19 straight games. And Missouri State did beat Maryland earlier this season as Missouri State wins the tip. Here is Caleb flicking it over to Binhar. Maya Binhar being hawked by Williams. Gardner getting the start for Missouri State. And this is something, Rebecca, that occasionally Missouri State will do and Coach Amaka Agugwa Hamilton, she will start Emily Gardner if she feels she needs a little more size. Yeah, this is her fourth start of the season. You saw her get the ball, have lots of patience inside when she caught it. That floater won't go for Binhar, and the rebound taken by Stanford. Taking a look at our Capital One starting lineups for Stanford. Anna Wilson, Lexi Hull, Kiana Williams, Haley Jones, and the freshman Cameron Brink as Hull. Short on the three. Brink back taps the rebound. Another chance for Hull. Can't hit that one. And Gardner able to secure the rebound for Missouri State. Taking a look at our Capital One starting lineups for Missouri State. Bryce Caleb, along with Sydney Wilson, Maya Binhar, Jasmine Franklin, and Emily Gardner in the front court. Wilson came on the dig, was able to knock it away. Anna Wilson, the co-defensive player of the year in the Pac-12 this season. Brink, good movement to Hull, who stepped out of bounds. And Stanford gives it up. Coach Mox, Amaka Agugwa Hamilton, the two-time Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year, took over an already successful program and has tried to build on it and done so incredibly impressively in her first two seasons at Missouri State. Said I have a saying, respect all, fear none. I live by it, our team lives by it, and so they're not fearing Stanford in this contest. The little push shot is good. Abby Hip puts in the first bucket of the game. Here's the freshman Brink, incredibly skilled, and floats that in. Cameron Brink inserted into the starting lineup about midway through, and Stanford has not looked back since. Cameron Brink, such a talented offensive player. She can face up and shoot from the elbow. She can drive from the elbow. We just saw her and what she can do on the block. Stanford's head coach, of course, Tara Vanderveer, the all-time winningest coach. In Division I history, her 35th NCAA tournament appearance, most all-time by head coach, 1,121 career wins for Tara, passing Pat Summit earlier this season as Hull banks it in off the nice entry feed from Haley Jones. And Stanford has the size advantage at some of the guard spots, in particular Hull, so they like to run that set where she can get inside, post up, and they deliver from the elbow area. Wilson flips it up, drew the foul, I believe against Brink. And it will be Cameron Brink's first personal. And free throws coming here for Sydney Wilson. 
And right away, Stanford, who runs a deep rotation, will go to their bench. Ashton Prechtel and Jana Van Geitenbeek will come into the game. Check that. It'll be Lacey Hull who will check in along with Prechtel for Stanford. And that's one of the luxuries that Tara Vandiver has is she takes out size and she brings in size. And, you know, often teams, once they get to the tournament, conference tournament, NCAA tournament, tight in their rotation, she has been able to keep her rotation 11 players deep. So Ashton Prechtel and Lacey Hull in off the bench for Stanford. Williams able to bank it in with the left hand. Really well done. You'll see that a lot from Stanford. Playing through the elbow area, the great cut and handoff. Here's Hip putting it on the deck. Jones, good D to stand her up. Caleb. You could just see the way Wilson all over Bryce Caleb and Stanford thought it should have been their basketball, but it's going to stay with Missouri State. Left side of the floor is cleared out, and so when Kiana Williams gets the handoff, she's got a free lane to the basket. See the numbers of the last four games for Kiana Williams, which Rebecca detailed in the open, just incredible. Franklin going to the right hand, couldn't finish. And Jones secures it for Stanford. Here comes Wilson dashing ahead. Williams separates and knocks it down. A projected first rounder in the upcoming WNBA draft and her family loving the start for Kiana Williams. She's been playing with a tremendous amount of confidence, has a great feel of when to look for her own offense, when to involve her teammates and can create for herself with that little step back. An 8-3 start for Stanford in this Sweet 16 matchup. Caleb finds some space finally, couldn't finish. Wilson just snared the rebound away. Wilson is shined for Stanford. The first season really starting full time and has played so well on both sides of the floor as Hull wildly couldn't get it to drop in. One of the things Missouri State has done well all season long is clean up the defensive glass. They do not give up offensive boards to other teams, even those who are bigger. Wilson alone knocks down the three and a timeout taken by Missouri State. An 11-3 start for the number one overall seed, Stanford trying to punch their ticket to the Elite Eight. The Sweet 16 of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ABC is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? It's been the most unusual year in maybe basketball history for the Stanford Cardinal. Because of local health restrictions in their county, they had to hit the road for the entire season. 63 days they were away from home to start things out, a 7,500 mile road trip before they were cleared to go back home and play a few of their games in Maples Pavilion. Add five more days for the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas, 13 days so far here in San Antonio. They've been on the road for more than 81 days this season. Tara Vanderveer says, we've learned that the most important skill we have as a team this year is flexibility. We just roll with it. And you know what was interesting, Holly? When we talked to Haley Jones, she said, we are all in. We, we're all in every practice, every game, because we don't take any of them for granted knowing they can be taken away at any moment. And Rebecca, that's been a common theme talking to coaches, not just Stanford, and their circumstances were particularly unique, but coaches talking about how the players have really seen practice time and every game is this gift, this outlet, this blessing because of what they've had to deal with with COVID. Yeah, there's certainly been a renewed sense of appreciation from basketball players <laughs> and their gratitude to be able to get out there and play this game. That jumper short, rebound taken in by Hull. And the shots Missouri State is getting are the ones they're going to get. It, because of the size Stanford has on the front line, they're not going to be able to get all the way to the rim. Great look right there from Keanu Williams. It's going to be mid-range jumpers from Missouri State, and they just have not been able to make them yet. I like how Dad was shaking his head like, man, my daughter's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, she is, sir. <laughs> and your barbecue is smacking. That's what we hear. <laughs> Jones had it taken away. Ellie Ruffridge into the game for Missouri State. She is an absolutely tremendous player who Missouri State really relies upon. Coming off a career high 20 points in the second round as Jones took a spill, got fouled, and will shoot two. Deanna Williams yet to miss so far in this game, and she's got all the levels. And there, nice little step back. She can step into the three ball. She has been playing so well the latter part of the season. Most threes in Stanford history. A third team AP All-American this season. And it was interesting talking with Kiana Williams because she said at the beginning of the season, she was so worried about the WNBA draft. She said she was worrying about April in December. And she ended up having a great talk with Erica McCall, who has been through this journey, going to the WNBA draft, former member of Stanford, and, and they had a great conversation, and she kind of settled her and got her back and focusing on the now and being present. Yeah, and the maturity for her to be able to realize that that may have been why those struggles were coming, pressing too much. Deanna Williams' draft stock has been rising. Binhar gets it over to Jackson, and Abby Jackson connects off the bench. Part of the Missouri Valley Conference all-newcomer team, the transfer from Auburn. Stanford defensively so good at taking away whatever your strength might be. Nice high-low pass there. Last hit the foot of Missouri State. It's going to stay with Stanford. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Elite Eight begins tomorrow on CBS and TBS or stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. What a great weekend it's been so far here in San Antonio. Four awesome games yesterday as the block was Given by Jackson on the other end. Sydney Manning couldn't finish, but gets fouled. And is going to shoot two as Missouri State tries to find their footing towards the end of this first quarter. Yeah, they've had nice life uh, on the defensive end, the, la the last you know, possession or two, and giving themselves some energy. And that's what they're going to need is to get out and transition. Oklahoma State was able to do that against Stanford in their second round game. Get some turnovers, get out, get layups because Stanford's defense is so good. If you can beat them down the floor, score before they set up, be to your advantage. These teams met in the 2019 Sweet 16. Stanford won that game 55-46. I mean, the defense in that game was the story. Look at the shooting percentages. They were ghastly for both teams, thanks to the defense. And Missouri State returns nine players from that game. Stanford returns five. Missouri State returning more players than any team in the tournament from that 2019 tournament is that jumper is good for Gardner. And Ryan, uh, this team has talked about, Missouri State said last time they were in the Sweet 16 against Stanford, they were just so happy to be there. They were so excited. It was a very young team, but with nine players back today, they said this is a totally different story. They're not happy to be here. They want to win, and they deserve to be here. They feel like this is a much more veteran group, and they're not going to be afraid out there today. How about that cleanup from Belibi? Here's the returners for Missouri State. This group that, as Holly said, is not satisfied with just arriving this season. Jackson off the bench, feeling good, giving Missouri State some life. Hannah jumps three, nice response for Hannah jump off the bench. <laughs> they just keep coming at you in waves. Believe offensive rebound, put back, jump in, hits the three. Gardner underneath, has it wrestled to the ground and a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to Stanford. And I give Gardner a lot of credit because she started off this game struggling a little bit. A couple early touches, a turnover, came out of the game, back in now. She was able to hit a face-up jumper and here gets to the offensive glass. Working hard. Hit, 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 hit. 
Alyssa Jerome in off the bench as well for Stanford. With Belibi, Williams, Hull, and jump as Belibi couldn't finish. Weak side rebound taken in by Jackson. Here comes Missouri State. And how about Missouri State making this little run without Caleb and Franklin on the floor? That's out of bounds off of Gardner, and it's going to be Stanford basketball. But you're right, Rebecca, when we talk to Coach Mox about the keys to this game, and even an X Factor, she still returned things to Jasmine Franklin and Bryce Caleb and how effective they were both going to have to be in order for Missouri State to have a chance. And for upperclassmen, sometimes you might be pressing a little bit in this moment. <laughs> Another one from Jump. And, and come out of the game, Coach Mox giving them a chance to collect their breath, see what's happening before they come back in. Hannah Jump shot it at over 41% from three this season and last season. What a bright spot Abby Jackson has been for Missouri State in this first quarter. She averages under five points a game. She already has five here in the first. Belibi putting it on the deck, getting the whistle against Jackson. Stanford right now, four for eight from the three-point line. Hannah jump, catch, shoot. Such a quick release. It is also, I mean, let's just let's just say it. It's, it's a perfect basketball name, too. I mean, yes. it's amazing. Belibi, who started the season incredibly strongly for Stanford, has struggled in the latter part of the year. Misses both free throws there, about a five second difference. Game and shot clock. You see the way the numbers dropped off for Belibi from those first 14 games. A lot of great nuggets on our score bug throughout. Binhar with five to shoot behind the back, forced it up. Good D there from Hull. Gardner got fouled. And you're right, Rebecca, nice bounce back from Emily Gardner after a tough start to the quarter. Gardner is a senior, and I've enjoyed watching her over the course of the past couple of years. And I have to admit that one of the reasons why is because she wears number 50. <laughs> and not a lot of people wear number 50 anymore. So when they do, it catches my eye. <laughs> and I'm happy to see her performing well here today. Now, we have not yet confirmed this, but I am just going to go ahead and say she wears number 50 because of Hall of Famer Rebecca yeah. Vogel. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I'm unilaterally making that decision. <laughs> Gardner hits both free throws. Kiana Williams will come in for the final possession here for Tara Vanderveer. She's not giving away seven seconds at the end of the quarter. She's going to put in one of her best offensive weapons. Wilson races up the floor, dishes back, that three, no, off the mark for Jerome, and that's how the first quarter will end, a big opening quarter for Kiana Williams. Stanford, an eight-point lead after one. We'll be back with the second quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. You're watching the Sweet 16. Take a flashback to Jackie Stiles back when Missouri State was Southwest Missouri State. And Jackie led the Lady Bears to the NCAA Final Four in 2001. Entered her college career as the NCAA's all-time leading scorer with 3,393 points during her time at Southwest Missouri State. Held that record for 16 years until it was broken by Kelsey Plum in 2017. Was the first Southwest Missouri State player drafted by a WNBA team when she went number four overall to the Portland Fire. This is a program with a lot of success as a mid-major. They've reached two Final Fours. This is their fifth Sweet 16 appearance. And look, they've won a game in nine of the 16 NCAA tournaments they've been in. Yeah, talking to the players and Coach Mox, you know, they feel like they haven't gotten the respect that they deserve, that they're a very good team, have been over the course of the past couple of years. and. Looking to earn some more of that respect here in the Sweet 16. Coach Mock says we play with a chip on our shoulder. Jump. 
Forced it up way high off the window. Got it back. Five to shoot. Battle for it. And a jump is called. Stanford has the possession arrow. Well, Coach Mox looking to take this team to the Elite Eight. She is one of four coaches who are in their first Sweet 16 as head coach. Terry Morin, Adia Barnes, they're going to the Elite Eight already punching their tickets. Good defensive stand there for Missouri State. And you can see why they're second in the nation in defensive rebound percentage. They attack the defensive glass, and even if their opponent gets the ball, they continue to go after it. Oh, Cameron Brink, the freshman, with an authoritative rejection. Brink led all freshmen in the nation in blocks this season. 6'4", and extremely long, and has good timing. She gets into foul trouble often. Her limits, her minutes can be limited by that. But when she is on the floor, she is impactful. The goddaughter of Dell and Sonia Curry, the parents of Steph Curry. And Seth Curry. As Jones, beautiful feed down the floor. Hull lines it up and knocks it down. And not to make everything about the bigs, but the reason that was open was because Cameron Brink ran the floor so hard. She sucked the defense, and Keanu Williams caught it, made the extra pass. Just really good basketball. Stanford 5 of 11 from 3 thus far. Here's Franklin trying to get going, and she's fouled by Brink. That'll be number 2 on Cameron Brink. Haley Jones is so good at fueling the break. You see her eyes, and she finds Keanu Williams in the corner, make the extra pass. Defense is late, but again, that started with Cameron Brink running the floor hard. Brink will check out with two fouls. Ashton Prechtel into the game off the bench. And Franklin hits the first free throw. Jasmine Franklin was an incredible high school athlete in Arkansas. Won eight state championships, two in basketball, Four in shot put, two in discus. The defensive player of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference this season was Franklin as she secures that rebound. Flung it ahead, but perhaps a little too ambitious and not necessary as Missouri State gave it back. It also was not a terrible feed. Pinhard just could not handle it. Wilson sneaks in and finishes with the left hand. Russell Wilson, Ciara in the building to celebrate. Russell, the older brother of Anna Wilson. I mean, that was a terrific take. Anna Wilson is only 5'9", and able to get over to the arms of Franklin, who is a good shot blocker. Oh, how about the rejection from Prechtel and then keeping her feet in bounds. Jones, another gorgeous down court feed. Wilson, another bucket, plus the foul. A chance for three for Anna Wilson. And Big Brother loves it. Haley Jones is so good at these three quarter court passes, and Anna Wilson is doing such a nice job of finishing with contact. I love it that Big Brother is in the stands rooting on his little sis. A timeout taken, Stanford a 13-point lead, second quarter action of the Sweet 16. They outscored Maryland 54-29 in the last 18 minutes, could set the table for this one. Anna Wilson completes the three-point play. For more on Anna, let's check in with Holly. So I'm trying not to be a creepy, weird stalker, but I was during the stay-at-home <laughs> quarantine period, of course, because Anna Wilson got to live with her brother, Russell Wilson, and Sierra, the worldwide superstar. They had a personal chef, a weight room, all of the amenities that we all wish we had during that stay home. But she's come back in incredible shape. She's having the best year of her life for Stanford basketball. And this was a fifth year for her. They are so grateful that she did come back. But I have to say, I was a little jealous of her stay home period. Well, of course, Holly is our worldwide superstar. That's right. There's Sierra and Russell Wilson with the kids catching the action. And Anna Wilson, you know, she had a, a, a really, really scary concussion earlier in her career and, and you know, took a while to bounce back from that. Rebecca was then 
you know, seen as a defensive option for this Stanford team. And really, that was the end of the floor she was known for. But this year, the offensive side of things and the efficiency especially has blossomed. Yeah, without question. I mean, she has been so good shooting over 40% from the three-point line has added that to her game. Abby Hip hits the three. A 31-20, Stanford leads, 6.30 to go in the second quarter of the Sweet 16 matchup. And Wilson puts the foul on Ruffridge. Missouri State is staying attached just enough. Mm -hmm. Just enough, you know, they're, they're in position still to, you know, we've got six minutes to the half to get in there with a, with a deficit in the single digits. Tossed out of bounds on the inbound as Hull tried to get it to Williams, the second turnover for Stanford. And I thought that Carolyn Peck in the studio just made a great point. Yeah. Thinking about that Maryland game, the, you know, the biggest win of the year for Missouri State. Game against Maryland back in November, they were down by 16 in that game. Caleb tried the pocket pass, and that's going to be a backcourt violation as Missouri State turns it over. The win against Maryland held Maryland to their second lowest scoring output of the season, forced 23 turnovers. Now, granted, Maryland was not yet maybe at the level that they are right now, but still, this is a Maryland team that's just sensational on that side of the ball. Yeah, a Final Four favorite for sure. Hull gets fouled by Caleb, and Hull will shoot two. You know, we were talking Missouri State alum before because we were talking about Jackie Styles. I think we should give a shout out to another big time Missouri State alum. Last year's home run leader, first baseman for the New York Yankees, Luke Voigt, spent four years at Missouri State. All right. You know I was going to find a way to get a Yankee right. I, I, I like right? it. <laughs> the NCAA Women's Championship Sweet 16 continues tonight on ESPN, 7 Eastern, Oregon against Louisville. And then at 9, it's Texas and Maryland. Defense of Texas, offense of Maryland. I'm excited for that one. A 33-20 Stanford lead over Missouri State. That leaner, too strong. Wilson sorted for the rebound. Wilson able to evade Wilson. That's Anna against Sydney. Stanford against Missouri State. Keanu Williams, seven points thus far. Williams nearly lost the handle, got it back. Williams was jumping up and down, wanting the basketball. Instead, Jones took care of business on the wing. That's the not so subtle way of saying, I wanted the ball. <laughs> it turned out all right for Stanford. And now a steal from Lexi Hall. Hull running the break. Hull unable to finish. The follow won't go for Brechtel. Loose ball taken by Caleb. Caleb yet to score in this game for Missouri State. Forced that one up and got a whistle. And Bryce Caleb will shoot two. Ryan, the last time down the floor, Haley Jones hit a three. Coming into the NCAA tournament, she was one of nine on the season from the three-point line. I think in the tournament now, she's three for four. Yeah. Watch Incredible. out. Watch yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice when one of your bigs all of a sudden adds the three when the games matter most. Yeah. We're talking with Haley Jones a couple days ago, and she talked about how this season she's been more vocal how sitting out so many games last year gave her a really interesting perspective, seeing where her teammates like the basketball. And it's helped her to know what spot she wants to put her teammates in as she's distributing. As Williams leaves it short, Ruffridge and Wilson get tied up. Here comes Ruffridge, delighting the Missouri State crowd. And they thought it should have been a foul on Wilson as Ruffridge tussled with her. Coach Mox called it, told us Ruffridge is a firecracker. 
That's a pretty good description of her. You see the, the numbers for Jones was the number one recruit in the country last year as Caleb can't get it to drop. Prechtel the rebound. By the way, Jones was the first number one prospect to sign with Stanford since our colleague Chenea Agumake back in 2009 as Jones finishes again. She's so good in the open floor handling the basketball as a facilitating forward. You just saw her finish for herself earlier in the game. We saw her deliver dimes on three-quarter court passes. As we said, now an efficient three-point shooter. Six points, five rebounds, three assists for Jones. A 16-point Stanford lead in this Sweet 16 matchup. Jackson was terrific off the bench in the first. Leaves that three short. Nice box out from Prechtel. Williams off on a three hole and soaring in. And the foul is called against Missouri State. How is that on Caleb? I mean, it's Gartner and Hall who have just a huge contact here. Oh, I see. Okay. Caleb kind of undercuts her as she's going for the box out. Woo, that was a lot of contact. That is the second foul on Caleb. The conference player of the year will check out with 3.23 to go in this second quarter. Lexi Hull and her twin Lacey, big part of this Stanford rotation. Lexi two times on the all Pac-12 team, including this season, and hits both free throws. Stanford's lead now at 18. Ruffridge, jumper, is good. I've really enjoyed watching her in this tournament. In the last round game against Wright State, she was just terrific. Had 20 points, a career high in that game. And hit some really important threes. Just plays with so much energy at her, in, at her size. It's remarkable. Ruffridge is the all-time leading scorer in Iowa high school basketball history. She said, Caitlin Clark didn't get that one from me. <laughs> Oh, Wilson, great hands, the steal, and the lay on the other end. Anna Wilson in double figures now and showing why she was the co-defensive player of the year in the Pac-12. It's fun seeing seniors shine in these moments later in the tournament. Three steals now for Wilson in this first half. Ruffridge forced it out. Been hard for Missouri State to get any kind of good looks against this Stanford defense. Oh, no, on a three, and Ruff reached the rebound. No team this year shot better than 41.8% against Stanford. That's how incredibly consistent their defense was. Yeah, they can play, play a containment man-to-man, -man, and they, Tara Vandiver always has a great scout. They know who to play off of if they need to double team, and then they have such great size at every position. It makes it difficult to get open looks. Jones there for the cleanup. Timeout, Coach Mox and Missouri State. The Stanford lead has swelled to 20 with 126 to go in this first half. Anna Wilson just picking the pocket. Look at her go. Three steals on the afternoon, finishing the other way. <laughs> it's gotta be nerve wracking, but so unbelievably joyful to watch a family member in the NCAA tournament, especially when they're playing as well as Anna is playing. 10 points, four of four from the floor, three steals for Wilson. Stanford's outscored Missouri State 21 to nine in this second quarter. Stanford trying to claim its third ever national championship. 
have not won since 1992. Have been to many a Final Four since then. Looking to punch their ticket into their 21st Elite Eight with a win today. Franklin couldn't finish, was grabbing her nose lip area afterwards. Five on four, Williams alone, connects on a three. And now a steal, and Williams couldn't quite bank it in. But Stanford firing on all cylinders in this opening half. Athletic rebound from Franklin, couldn't save it. And now a tie-up, a jump ball, and the possession arrow does belong to Missouri State. Keanu Williams, this is like a, a shooting drill. The amount of time she had on this shot as no one's trying to close out. Holds the pose, but not too long. Then she goes and gets the steal. About a 12 second difference, game and shot clock. Ruffridge curling and finishing. Man, she's tough. 5 3 and still able to get that off the rim over a slightly bigger defender. Shot clock turned off. Six seconds left in the quarter. Prechtel underneath, wow. I mean, talk about perfect execution. Just remarkable precision there on that possession from Stanford. Keanu Williams, 10 points, two for four from three in that first half. As we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance, Anna Wilson, what an opening half. Uh, she's brought so much energy on both ends of the floor. Offensively, stroking her three, getting into the lane and finishing over bigger defenders. Defensively wreaking havoc out in transition as well. What a start for the senior. Yeah, I'll take that too. And go all the way in. What a first half. Anna Wilson is with Holly Rowe. Well, Anna, we know all about your defense, but today you are really an offensive threat for your team. How are you turning that good defense into points right now? Yeah, I mean, my, my main focus is my defense, and um, you know, our team is getting out in lanes, um, playing really, really well, playing together. And uh, for me, you know, just trying to do whatever my team needs. Um, but everyone's playing so well. Um, I'm proud of everyone. You've got the assignment today of their leading scorer, Bryce Caleb, and she doesn't have a field goal today. How tough is that assignment for you, and how are you doing it so well? Yeah. Um, I love playing defense, um, and I know that that's my contribution to the team, and if I need to make stops, sorry, I'm breathing too hard. Thank um, you. <laughs> um, you know, if getting stops is uh, what I need to do, then that's what I'm going to try and do every night. Um, and so I'm just really, really excited to be playing in the 316, so, yeah. Love it. Your coach's dream. I don't ever hear kids say, I love defense. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. I uh, love that. When you hear the earnest, I love defense, you know, coaches, they smile. I'm sure Carolyn and Coach Landers both smiling in the studio right now. Time to go to the halftime report. Maria, Carolyn Peck, Andy Landers coming up right now. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. This Sweet 16 matchup rolling into the third quarter with Stanford leading Missouri State 49-26. Taking a look at the Alamo region and the top of the bracket. The winner of this game will face the winner of Louisville and Oregon. That game at 7 o'clock tonight on ESPN. As we welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco with the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. Stanford, the top overall seed for a reason. Many reasons. They showed those reasons in the first half. Uh, so balanced on the offensive end and so potent when they play through the elbow, which they do so well. 18 points in the paint in the first half, and it's not from their bigs posting up. They clear out the left side of the floor. Kiana Williams gets it on the back cut. Then they'll post up their guards as well. They've got great size on the perimeter here. Hall catching, finishing inside. And then if you think you know the play and you're going to Play your defense to it, unselfish. Pass, high, low, finish. They've been so good and efficient so far. Very balanced scoring 
for Stanford. You see five players with at least eight points as we check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, the number one thing Missouri State does to get in games and turn over teams is steal the basketball. They have not been able to do this against Stanford. Stanford with us, three turnovers in that first half. Another nice three from Brink. And taking care of the basketball against this very feisty Missouri State defense is a key. They have two players that have 60 or more steals this season. Stanford's not having it. No, they are not, Holly. Just three turnovers in the first half for Stanford. Meanwhile, Missouri State turned it over nine times. Jones kicks. Williams hits. Another three for the San Antonio native Keanu Williams. And it happens that quickly with Stanford's ability to just drain threes. Cameron Brink played four minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. First touch on that ball, first possession, she drained a three. As just 10 threes all season, but shot it at 40%. Ruffridge starting the second half, got in there, came up with a steal. Here is Caleb, who was really held in check by Anna Wilson in the first half, as Gardner knocks down a long two. Brink faces up, can't finish. Rebound taken by Caleb. Shot clock down to seven. Caleb. Gardner has to put it up. Gardner gets denied by Brink. She stood for a moment waiting to make sure there was no foul call. Wow, Wilson just <laughs> looked like her brother was zinging one over the middle as she fired that bullet into Brink. Stanford has been hot from three all season long. In this game, they're 9 of 18 in a great way to get an open look. Pushing in transition while Haley Jones just makes the right decision in transition more often than not finding her open teammates. You look at the three-point shooting in the tournament thus far for Stanford. It has just been incredible. As Brink comes up with her second straight rejection, her third of the afternoon. Jones spins, can't finish, but drew the foul and will shoot two. We talked about it earlier in the game. Cameron Brink, 6'4 and long. That's what you want to do. Stay on your feet, stay vertical, and then look at her go. After she blocks shots, she sprints the floor. Four blocks now for Brink. Jones. Four blocks in seven minutes. That's block efficiency, Ryan. That's right. <laughs> You heard Carolyn Peck talking about it at the half. Missouri State's got to hit mid-range jumpers because when they've gone inside, it's been swallowed up, especially when Brink has been in there. When they get an open look, it's not one of those games you're going to have to keep working it around. You're not getting a lot of open looks. you got to take them and make them when you get them. It's five days until the women's Final Four. Coverage begins Friday at 5.55 p.m. with the pregame show on ESPN. Before the semifinal games at 6 and 9.30 Eastern, and then the championship game Sunday, April 4th at 6 p.m. Eastern. For more, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. That's going to be one heck of a five-minute pregame show. Coach Landers, Carolyn Peck, Maria Taylor, I cannot wait to see that content. Coming out swinging. Franklin goes one for two at the line. Three points for Jasmine Franklin. Averages 12 points, nine and a half rebounds this season. The Defensive Player of the Year in the Missouri Valley Conference. As Brink couldn't quite hang on to it. Then you got to know the stanchion up close and personal. Stanford turns it over. A 56-29 Stanford lead. Two turnovers in this third quarter for Stanford after they had three the entire first half. 
More block efficiency, Rebecca. That's number five for Cameron Brink. And, and Jasmine Franklin is good at this. Facing up, driving left. Cameron Brink is just so long. Her timing impeccable. Well, on that play, she often gets foul trouble, but on the, <laughs> here today it's been impeccable. And now a five-second violation on Ruffridge. Brink, you just saw the number three prospect in the nation this season. And as a freshman, 12th in the nation in blocks, first among freshmen. Well, Brink has been a terrific addition to the Stanford team, getting a starting role midway through the season. And she came in very prepared. She's doing some key work with athletes Unlimited that uh, Susan Borchard is the owner of Susan, a former Stanford soccer player, and her husband have kind of started this personal training business that is really, really doing great. The athlete bl blueprint trains Sue Bird, Neka Ogumake, Brianna Stewart. Every athlete that I have seen that starts training with Susan Borchard has become elite and won championships. So I love it that as a high schooler, she was already on that elite level of mindset of really getting her body right for this freshman year at Stanford. Yeah, Holly and Susan, the former strength coach of Stanford about 10 years ago before she went and started the athlete blueprint and her husband, Curtis, who was a player at Stanford, has been working with Cameron on her post moves since she was a freshman in high school. Brink just picked up her third foul, checked out, and now we have some extracurriculars here from Franklin and Prechtel after a tenacious jump ball. Boxing out hard, going up for it. And Prechtel understandably upset because she feels the arms around her neck, but because it's behind her, she doesn't understand how they got there. I'm glad that that was just called a jump, jump ball. They're going to take a look and see if there is anything more to it. Never yeah. mind, they've decided not to. Yeah, I don't think you need to. You know what, they were gonna, and then they heard what you said, Rebecca, and they, and they said, you know what, we don't need to anymore. And I agree, I trust Rebecca like that too. Abby Hip couldn't finish, here comes Wilson. 12 points for Anna Wilson. Hole a three, no. Rebound, scrapes out to Williams. Wow, what a feed. Williams to Prechtel, and Prechtel just couldn't put it home. Williams was already dancing into the backcourt, ready to celebrate the assist. Sydney Manning into the game off the bench for Missouri State. Franklin, beautiful footwork from Jasmine Franklin, who's going to shoot two. Coming to this game, Coach Mox told us, you know, we've got to get a lot from Franklin. She can face up. She's really good at ripping and going from the free throw line. We've seen that. She's just run into Brink too many times. And also has nice footwork with her back to the basket. We just saw that on display there. Two. Oh, for six from the floor in this game for Franklin. Coach Mox talked about Franklin as an emotional leader for our team as well. So tough, plays with such grit. As Franklin hits both free throws. A 58-32, Stanford lead. Stanford looking to make it to their 21st Elite Eight as Jones it's the jumper. Stanford just comes at you from all angles, Rebecca. And how about when Haley Jones caught it and she did the reverse pivot? She was looking. Is anybody cutting? Is anybody else open? Nope. <laughs> all right, I'll take it and make it myself. Manning nearly went up and down. Just got it over to Franklin. Franklin can't get it to go. Jones the rebound. Squirms away from traffic. Good hands by Franklin. It ends up with Williams off on a three. Anna Wilson, the rebound on the weak side for Stanford. Shot clock down to three. 
Williams will fire and hit. Rebound secured by Franklin. Caleb dashing ahead. Caleb will hook that one in off the window. Bryce Caleb, who has been held very much in check today by Anna Wilson in the Stanford defense. Jones. All right, that time she missed a three, Rebecca. Yes, she did. <laughs> Had been, had been three for four in the tournament after she didn't shoot them essentially at all during the regular season. Bodies hit the floor. But it definitely de changes the way teams are going to have to defend her going forward. You can't give her the step anymore from the three-point line. Coming into the tournament, you could. Right. Oh, nice little decision there, but it did not quite execute. Timeout on the floor. Tara Vanderveer has told us when she's on the floor, Cameron Brink is phenomenal. Why? Because she does this over and over and over again. Well, a national story earlier in this NCAA tournament after these photos of the disparity of the women's weights and the men's weight room at the NCAA tournament. That's Ali Kirshner, the strength and conditioning performance coach for Stanford, who actually tweeted that out and got that ball rolling of that conversation of inequities between the two tournaments. And Ali had a meeting with Tara Vandeveer. And, you know, at first I was I was worried, thinking, is she going to get in trouble for posting these pictures? And, of course, because Tara Vandeveer is the human that she is, absolutely had Ali's back and, and herself put out a big statement and she's just said you know this is sad we just feel so sad that we are continue to treat her like second-class citizens because we're women and um, we're just sick of it we're just sick and tired of it but how happy are we now that this conversation has been started as you see him uh, Hannah jump hit the three from the corner it's an important conversation to have it's taken too long to have it now everyone is paying attention 2022 NCAA tournament. Let's see how things change. Jackson leaves it short. Stanford a 63-34 lead. Third quarter action in this Sweet 16 matchup. Here is Wilson. 12 points on the day for Anna Wilson, whose defense has been incredible. Belibi squeezed it to the corner. Williams got it. It's important in tournament time for your guards and your primary ball handlers to be playing well and to be playing with confidence and having the ability to create their own shots because in crunch time that's who it comes down to and Tara Vanderveer has to feel pretty good about her ball handlers right now. You saw the Williams family celebrating meanwhile a foul underneath here against Missouri State it'll go against Binhar look at the littles trying to box each other out here going for the board. Is that on Caleb? No, they actually at least announced that that foul was on Maya Binhar, who was a little bit closer to the free throw line as that battle was happening underneath. So I think Caleb and Wilson each made it out without a foul there. Binhar's also a little, so that's okay. <laughs> Belibi yanks that out of bounds. Fran Belibi has had some issues with turnovers this season. And she's a player early in the year, was brimming with confidence, playing so well. I would love to see, and I'm sure Tara Vanderveer would too, that confidence return and become the beast that she was early on in the season for Stanford. In the corner, that jumper won't go. The follow is good. By the little. That time she had success getting to the offensive glass. Bryce Caleb. Caleb averaging 13 and a half points per game this season. Franklin hit the deck out front as jump buried another three. I think Coach Mox thought maybe there should have been an illegal screen there as Caleb took a tumble. It certainly was an effective screen by Ashton Prechtel. Here is Caleb. Bryce Caleb pedaling through traffic beautifully, just couldn't finish, but got a whistle against Stanford. 
hey, if you can't make it to San Antonio, but you want to be here for the Women's Final Four, you could join the NCAA and all of us. Look at our crew. And it's fan cutout program supporting the KGAL Cancer Fund, the Pat Summit Foundation, and the San Antonio Food Bank. For more information on how you can benefit these great causes and get your cutout into the Alamo Dome, go to NCAA.com slash WFF cutouts. How do you think the people feel who are sitting right behind those cutouts that the cutouts have better seats than they do? <laughs> well, I think they probably feel like they're in great company. Right, well, there you go. <laughs> Holly? Well, guys, Bryce Caleb, who's the heart and soul of this Missouri State team, actually grew up playing basketball for her mother, but is a very successful coach in Sepulpa, Oklahoma. Darlene told her daughter that, listen, if you want to play for me, you better learn how to play some defense or you're not going to get onto the court. So I love it when your mom's your coach in high school and she sets the tone. Because normally these days, it's if you want to play for me, you will because you're my child. So I'm glad that her mother set the, set the standard. You've got to produce on the defensive end. Darlene is really the kind of parents that every coach would want. Yes. A 30. Three-point Stanford lead. Third quarter winding to a close here. Wilson turns the corner. Couldn't finish. Belibi scrapping for it. And a jump ball is called. Stanford has the possession arrow. Brechtel puts it in. Able to float it home. is going to be short from Manning. Wilson the rebound, her sixth, to go with 12 points and four steals. Jump gets rejected by Jackson, who then controlled it. A phenomenally athletic rejection from Abby Jackson, who then was able to immediately snare it. And Jump's a tough one to block because of how quickly she gets her feet set. Jackson's had a really nice game off the bench today. She has shined for Missouri State in what has otherwise been a tough afternoon for the Lady Bears. Jackson, the senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas, and the transfer from Auburn. Seven points, two blocks. And free throws now for Abby Jackson, whose father played basketball at Louisiana Tech. Jackson goes one for two, shot clock turned off. Stanford can hold for a final possession. Jana Van Geitenbeek will creep across the timeline. Good D from Caleb. Loose ball on the floor, and this time it's Missouri State who has the possession out. I'm loving the energy that I'm seeing on the defensive end. The last couple of possessions in particular from Missouri State continuing to fight really hard. That's what this team is all about. I always felt like that'd be so much pressure when you got to tie your shoe with the national <laughs> audience watching the seconds left. <laughs> that can never be a good tie at the end of that. No, we can't. Third quarter winding to a close. Caleb leans in and that will do it for the third. Stanford, a 71-37 lead after three here in the Sweet 16. The Sweet 16 of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship on ABC is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Well, Stanford and Missouri State doing battle in this Sweet 16 matchup. And Stanford has dominated this afternoon having a good time as they get ready to head to the Elite Eight. For more on how Stanford is staying loose, let's check in with Holly Rowe.
Well, guys, we told you they've been in hotel rooms for about 81 days this year. Well, Kiana Williams' parents brought down a ping pong table here to their hotel in San Antonio. There's a major tournament going on. Here are the finals on the left side. <laughs> Lexi Lowe is really terrific. I'm going to pick her as my favorite to move through. Hannah jumps pretty good, too. The entire staff is involved. Their video coordinator, everybody. And uh, Kiana's only irritation is that she got out the very first round, even though her parents brought the table. So they're <laughs> having all kinds of fun. I love how, Ollie, we have the actual bracket breakdown on the side. Of fantastic. Are there seats? What are the seats? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if there are any seats. <laughs> sure, Kiana gave herself a one seat, and that was a major upset. Yeah. We just saw Lexi. All right, Lexi, you're the favorite, according to Holly Rowe. Bring home the title. <laughs> Ruffridge hits the three. Ellie Ruffridge, who scored just under 3,000 points in high school. Just ridiculous. Said that people have always doubted her because of her size. Brechtel hits the three. Everybody on Stanford shooting well from downtown. Bigs, littles. In betweens, they're all just shooters. Stanford 13 of 27 now from downtown. Franklin couldn't finish that one. Got it back, another chance working Prechtel. And a foul called against Wilson, who came with the swipe. And that'll be the second foul against Hannah Wilson. You mentioned Stanford's three numbers. It's the reason they're so difficult to, to, to beat. They play really solid defense. They rebound well. When they're shooting the three ball like that, wow. Here are the threes in the NCAA tournament thus far. 41 most through the first three games of the tournament since 2000. Brechtel couldn't add to the total there. Belibi left alone, and you could see for a moment where there was that anticipation of, is she going to throw it down? Yeah. <laughs> Fran Belibi has serious dunking ability. Became the first woman since Candace Parker back in 2004 to win the Powerade Jam Fest dunk contest. And the McDonald's All-American in there! She had the chance! but went for the lay instead. You know, the crowd is waiting to see if they get that in this fourth quarter. Oh, I thought we were. Jackson hits the three. Abby Jackson continues her strong performance today. Yeah, she's played confident from the moment she stepped on the floor. And a jump. The stroke has been absolutely electric this afternoon for Hannah Jump. Five of seven from three-point range. She is an outstanding three-point shooter. 41% last year as a freshman, 41.5% this year as a sophomore. Here was pregame, Rebecca. Talking about Fran. Yeah, she did that. Oof. We thought she might replicate that a moment ago went in. Didn't quite have her feet right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fran Belibi checking out. Deanna Williams as well. Brink gets fouled, and then a little added rejection at the end of the play by Franklin. Now for Fran Belibi, the eighth woman to dunk in a Division I game. She is the fifth to dunk in multiple games. Has a couple of dunks this season. Shot clock inside of five. Brink got position and able to finish. 
She's a freshman. Yeah. I cannot wait to watch her develop over the course of the next three years. She is going to be so good by the time she's done. Oh, nice little spin pass inside from Ruffridge. And Abby Hip able to quick curl at home. Six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup between Stanford and Missouri State. It has been a really fun weekend. Four awesome contests yesterday as Wilson gets fouled here. The NCAA Women's Championship continues with the Elite Eight on Monday. Seven Eastern on ESPN, Baylor and UConn, nine Eastern. It'll be Indiana and Arizona, both of those schools trying to make their first Final Fours after big time wins yesterday. How about Baylor UConn, Rebecca? Some early thoughts on that contest. How about Melissa Smith going 11 for 11 yesterday? Both teams playing exceptionally well. Baylor's been terrific defensively all season long. UConn's defense has kind of built up to this crescendo where they're playing really well right now. Ooh, I can't wait for that one. Saw Michigan really give Baylor all they could handle yesterday in what was a riveting contest. Overtime game, Rough Ridge, nice touch pass. Got it back in the corner, hits the three. Ellie Rough Ridge's motor keeps going all four quarters. Well, we pride ourselves on being objective in the NCAA tournament, not rooting for any teams, but I'd be lying if I didn't say Ellie Ruffridge hasn't stolen a piece of my heart. This is 5-3 <laughs> out here. She is so little. She's from Pocahontas, Iowa, a very, very small team about an hour north of Ames, Iowa. And this young lady is playing with so much heart and so much spirit. As we said, she's the all-time leading scorer in Iowa high school basketball. Not even Caitlin Clark got that record. And when we asked her about it, she had these big, huge dimples, and she said, nah, she didn't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Manning can't finish the layup. Franklin is fouled. Ruffridge was absolutely delightful to talk with. Still playing hard here. It's Stanford in control. 86-50, under five to go in the fourth. Passing Pat Summit, win number 1,099. The new career wins leader. Really hope Pat Summit is looking down and saying, you know, good job, Tyra, keep it going. It was so awesome to see Tara's players celebrate this accomplishment with her with such gusto and vigor. And you see the most Division I wins in women's college basketball history. Tara Vanderveer with 1,121. Gina Oriema right behind her, both of them passing the legend Pat Summit this season. Now, did the two wins from Chris Daly count towards that or not? Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if those wins go on Gino. I think they do. I think Gino has 12 wins. He has to, <laughs> he has get to make back. up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been incredible what Tara has done and with this Stanford program for so many decades now. And this is a team with an outstanding shot at getting her national championship number three as Ruffridge hits another three. And if nothing else, it's fun watching this young woman in the final moments for Missouri State. You can see why she's got a piece of Holly's heart. Four minutes to go in the fourth quarter of this Sweet 16 matchup. Shot clock at four. Belibi can't quite stick it. No poo gave them another shot. Hull tried to squeeze it into Nopu. Let's check in with Holly. 
you guys are talking about the legend Tara Vanderveer, and she's just so fascinating. She's got so many different interests. ESPN.com did a wonderful article about her today, about how in third or fourth grade she fell in love with the dribble weave or the three-man weave drill. She said, I got so obsessed with that. From that point forward, basketball had my heart. And I really recommend you to read that article. But, you know, she started out, wrote 20 letters to different places trying to get a GA job. Two people responded. One of those was Ohio State, eventually getting a full-time job there. And, and the rest is history. She has just been one of the great teachers in this game. And we are just really proud to see what she continues to accomplish. I always think about the people who turned down those kind of <laughs> legends in the making as grad assistants, right? Like, oh, yeah, maybe I should have given that one a shot. It's just incredible what Tara Vanderveer has done over the years. So interesting to talk to her the other day, too, about the opportunities she wanted to have as a kid athletically that were denied to her just because she was a woman. Yeah. And, and that is why so many of these coaches um, were so passionate when everything happened in terms of the weight room. This is not a one-time thing. It's something they've been living with their entire lives. And she talked to us very eloquently about that. Yeah, she said two things stood out to her experiencing that as a, as a young girl. She said one, she wanted to play Little League Baseball. As Ruffridge hits another three, said she wasn't allowed to. And then when she was a sophomore in high school, she was an outstanding tennis player, wanted to play on the boys' team. And the school board said, We'll talk about it in June, which of course was after the season was over. So she said there's always a, there's a pain that comes with that and experiencing you know, a lifetime of recognizing inequality. Gardner bounces it out of bounds, and it's Stanford basketball. 86-59, Stanford in front. How about rail cam? What a shot. RC1. Oh, I like that. Came up with a droid name real quickly. I did. Pretty complicated one. <laughs> <laughs> Shot clock at four, Hull might have had it partially blocked. Down court feed, Ruffridge squeezes it out to Caleb. Her three is good. Bryce Caleb hits the three, and now Coach Mox is going to get her seniors out. What a career so many of these young women have had. They'll get a well-deserved applause from the Missouri State faithful. Wow, it is always emotional watching seniors seasons end as Emily Gardner gets a big hug from Coach Mox, as does Ellie Ruffridge. Obviously feeling waves of emotion as Missouri State's season comes to an end. And what this senior class has done for Missouri State has just been incredible reaching Two Sweet 16s. Who knows what would have happened last season had there been a tournament after their 26-4 and four season. And some of those young women, their future is not yet decided. Eligibility, of course, with this year not counting towards it because of the pandemic. These players could stay and play another year if they wanted to. And some of them still undecided, but regardless, obviously, an emotional end here to this season for Missouri State. Brie Ellis can hit the three. Jackson could hook it in. Brie Ellis, by the way, number 24, a massive Holly Rowe fan. <laughs> she came, came right up and said, Holly, I, I really want your job. Hull able to keep it in bounds. Final 25 seconds here. And it's going to be Missouri State basketball. Rebecca, what struck you most about the way Stanford played today? They were terrific defensively and stayed consistent on that end. But the way they have been able to shoot the three ball this entire tournament has been off the charts. And they are going to be a very difficult out if they continue to hit as many as they have been with the efficiency with the way they've been shooting. 
The Liberty Capacity crowd rising to its feet, applauding as Stanford is headed to its 21st Elite Eight. They take down Missouri State, 89-62 the final. 17 straight wins now for the Stanford Cardinal. And they will prep for the Elite Eight on Tuesday. Tara Vanderveer waiting to greet Coach Mox. At center court. As they exchange pleasantries. And Stanford walks off after a very impressive all-around performance and victory today, including the shooting, Rebecca. In the NCAA tournament, they have not had a game where they've made less than 13 threes. And it's their big players, their little players, their forwards, their guards. Keanu Williams leading the charge. So good from the perimeter. Let's check in with Holly. Well, I am here with the hometown hero from San Antonio, Keanu Williams. What was it like for you to be in front of your friends and family? That was a loud cheering section today. Uh, I told them it's a competition for tickets, so if I don't hear you, I'm going to have to rotate, rotate you through. But no, it, it, to be serious, uh, it, it's great. It's great being home. Uh, I haven't played in front of uh, my family all year, so for the tournament to be here, uh, I just want to go hard uh, for my senior year. This team is really seeming to click on all cylinders right now. How do you describe the ball movement and the ability for so many different types of players to hit threes right now? Uh, we just feed off each other. You know, we, we try to ride the hot hand. Um, it, it's hard to scout us because you can't just focus on one person. Uh, if I don't have it going, I know one of my teammates is going to pick up uh, pick up the load for me. So when, when one person has a hot hand, we just, we just feed off of them. All right, a trip to the Elite Eight. Thank you so much, Kiana. I hope those fans get some tickets. We're going to be in tough competition. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. I love you. Thank you. <laughs>